Supernatural Season 1, Season 1, The Pilot. Prologue, Exit House, Night, Lawrence, Kansas. 22 years ago, these scenes are definitely dated to 2nd November 2005. Crickets chirp, a large, judicious tree only stands outside one of several suburban houses, homes, in inter side in initial nursery night. A woman, Mary Winchester, wearing a white nightgown, carries a small child, a son, Dean, to dark room. Mary, come on, let's say good night to your brother. Mary turns on lights, it's the nursery of a baby. Sam is lying in his crib, looking over at Mary and Dean. Mary sits Dean down. Dean lies over the side of the crib, kisses Sam on the forehead. Dean knights Sam. Mary leans over Sam as well. Mary, good night, love. Mary brushes Sam's hair back and kisses his forehead. Man, hey, Dean. Dane turns and the doorway wearing a US MC t shirt is John. Dean brushes over to him. Dean, Daddy, John, hey buddy. John scoops Dean up. Dean up. John, so what do you think? You think Sammy's ready to toss around a ball football yet? Dean shakes his head, laughing. Dean, no, Daddy. John laughs. John, no. Mary passes John and Dean on the way out of the room. Mary, you got him. John, I got him. John hugs Dean closer. John, sweet dreams, Sam. John carries Dean out of the room, flipping off the lights. Sam watches him go, gurgling and tries to reach his toes. A ball, bathroom, baseball theme mobile above Sam's crib begins to spin on its own while Sam watches as transportation theme clock on the wall ticks, ticks, stops, the moon shaped night light flickers. In it, I in it, it moves the bedroom night. Lights flicker on a layer of beach bonnet sitting on a nightstand next to a photo of Mary and John's, John's strange noises go through the monitor. Mary sleep in bed stirs. She turns on light on a nightstand. Mary, John. Mary turns. She's alone. She gets up in the tunnel. In it, hallway night. Mary stands. Mary walks down the hall. The nurse, Sam's nursery. John, seen only silhouette, stands over Sam's crib. Mary, John, is he hungry? John turns his head. Sam, shh. Mary, all right. Mary heads down to the hallway. The light by the stairs is flickering. Mary frowns and gets goes to tap until the light steadies. Mary, huh? More flickering light is coming from downstairs. Mary investigates. War movies on the TV. John is falling asleep watching it. If John was here. Mary realizes that the, then the man upstairs could be caught with John. Maybe it must be dangerous. She run, runs back upstairs. Mary, Sammy, Sammy. Mary enters Sam's nursery. A stop short. In, in the IT living room. Night. Upstairs, Mary screams. John wakes up. John, Mary? John sc scrambles out of the chair. John, Mary. John runs upstairs. INT, nursery night. John bursts through the closed door in the nursery. John, Mary. The room is quiet and reappears em appears empty except for Sam awake and crib. John glances round and pushes down the side of Sam's crib. John? Hey, Sammy, you okay? Something dark dr drips next to Sam. John touches it. Two more drops land on the back of John's hands. And it looks like blood. John looks up. Mary is sprawled across the ceiling. The stomach of a night gown, red with blood. Staring at John and struggling to breathe. John collapses on the floor, staring at Mary. John! No, 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 Mary! Mary bursts in flame. The fire spreads over the ceiling. John stares, frozen. John, Sam wells. Sam, John, reminded of he's not alone, gets up and scoots Sam out of his crib and rushes out of the room. It's initial hallway, night. Dean is awake and coming, going to investigate. Danny, Danny, John shoves Dean, shoves Sam at Dean. To John, take your brother outside as fast as you can and don't look back now, Dean, go. Dean turns and runs. John turns back to the nursery. John, Mary, the entire room is on fire. Mary herself can hardly be seen. John, no, exit. Exit T. 
house, night. Dan, Dean runs outside, holding Sam. Dean, it's okay, Sammy. Then he turns up, turns to look at Sam's window, which is lit with gold. John runs outside, scoops up Sam, Dean and Sam, and carries them both away. John, what? I got you. Fire explodes out of Sam's nursery window. X, EXT. House, night, night later. The Lawrence Fire Department has arrived. A firefighter gets out of a fire truck and takes over at the gauges for another firefighter. Firefighter, I've got it. You go, you go hold the line up. The second fighter, firefighter goes to the back of the truck, takes hose from a third fire hose, fire worker. Firefighter, fi- third firefighter, the five, fi- that firefighter takes hose towards the house where a full firefighter is spraying f- through Sam's worst window, a paramedic opens the door back of an ambulance. A police officer waits the neighbours back. Officer, stay back. You have to stay back. Across the street from the house, John and Dean sit on the hood of John's impalier. John holding Sam. John looks at the very moments of the fire. Act 1, Stafford, Stafford University, present day. It's 31st of October, 2005. Gasoline by Ginger begins to play. Apartment in IT. Bedroom day. Young woman Sam, young woman Jess comes around the corner. She's wearing a sexy nurse costume, adjusting her hat. A photo of Mary and John from earlier is on the dresser. Jess, go to move, go, get a move on that for you. Music, I've been shot from a, I've been shot from a cannon. Jess, we're supposed to be there. Like 15 minutes ago, Jess walks off. Sam, Jess, Sam, music, I'm a human cannibal. Jess, you coming on what? Starring Jacob Pralatsky. A young man pokes his head around the corner. This is Sam. He's wearing jeans, a free shirt. It's not a costume. Sam, do I have to? Jess, yes. Music, I'm going to fly. Jess, I mean, it'd be fun. Sam comes into the room. Jess, where's your costume? Music, I'm going to fall, fall, fall. Sam laughs and ducks his head. Jason Alcool, Sam, you're right, you know how I feel about Halloween, party, INT, bar, night, Clack it, classics, what you gonna do, begins the cook, play, music, show me what you're gonna do, yeah, what are you gonna do, are you trying to get in, yeah, what are you gonna do, gonna do, bars decorated for Halloween, including gargoyle, cobwebs and a baseball bat hat that says get naked. Someone pulls someone else's shot. Everyone's in costume. Star, guest starring Sarah Smith, Shan, Shanai. Jess, music, are you going to ride? Jess raises a glass for, as a young man, a gold costume. Lewis comes up to the table where Sam and Jess are. Sam is not in costume. Jess, so where? Here's the Sam. Music baby. Andrina Polikulai. Jess, this awesome LOS SSAT victory. Sam, all right, all right. Not the, that big a deal. Jess, Sam and Lewis, Lewis, clunk glasses. Jess, yeah, he acts all humble. Samantha Smith. Jessica, but he, he scored a 100, yeah, but he scored 174. Lewis drinks his hot and goes, so does Sam. Lewis is that good, Jeffrey D. Milgan. Jess, pretty scary good, Jess drinks. Lewis, so there you go, your first draft pick. You can go to any law school you want. Lewis sits next to Sam, RD call. Sam, actually, I got an interview here, Monday. If it goes okay, I think I got a shot at a whole, a full ride next year. Yes, hey, it's gonna be go great. Sam, it's better. It better. Russ, come in. Lewis, how does it feel to get, be the golden boy of your family? Sam, oh, they don't know. Lewis, oh no, I am a be gloating. Why not? Sam, because we're not exa- exactly the Brady's. Lewis, I'm not exactly the Huxleberry's. More shots. So this is Sam speaking chorus. The German, just as Sam, no, no, Sam, no, Lewis. Goes up to the bar anyway. Jess, no, seriously, I'm proud of you. You're going to not come dead on Monday. And Steve Rattenberg. Jess, you're going to get that, that get that full ride. I knew, I know it. Sam, 
What would you do without you? Jess, crash and burn. Jess smiles and pulls Sam in for a kiss. Lizzie, are you going to skid in? Uh, what, yeah, what are you going to do? Apartment, and INT, bedroom, night. Music, are you going to ride, baby? Sam and Jess lay in bed, back to back, Steph Smith's position. A sound outside the room, like a window opening. Sam opens his eyes. IT apartment night. Sam leaves the weird room and looks around the apartment. A window is open. Early, uh, it just must have been closed. Footsteps. A man walks past the string of beds as far as the hall, into the hall. Sam moves to the other part of the whole apartment and waits. Man is his room. Sam lunges forward, grabs a man at his shoulder. A man knocks Sam's arm away and they use a strike at Sam who ducks. A man grabs Sam's arm, swings him around, shoves him back. Sam kicks him and is blocked and pushed back into another room. The man hadn't seen Sam's face before. He sees it now. Sam gets his first glimpse of the man. The man elbows Sam in the face. Sam knocks his kicks at his head. The man ducks and swings as Sam blocks. The man kicks Sam down, pins him to the floor. One hand at Sam's neck and the other one holding Sam's wrist. Sam, whoa, easy, tiger. Sam breathes hard. Sam, Dean? Dean laughs. Sam, you scared the crap out of me. Dean, that's because you're out of practice. Sam grabs Dean's hand and yanks Sam in his heel to put Dean's back and Dean on the floor. Dean, or not, Sam taps Dean twice where Sam is holding him. Dean, get off of me. Sam rolls to his feet and pulls Dean up. Sam, what the hell are you doing here? Dean, well, I was looking for your beer. Dean puts his hand on Sam's shoulders, takes one, and lets go. Sam, what the hell are you doing here? Dean, okay, all right, oh, we've got to talk. Yes, Sam, huh? Oh, the phone. Dean, if I called, you would have picked, would you pick it up? Jean just put, put, turns the light on. He's wearing very short shorts and a crop smurf shirt. Sam, yes, Sam. Sam and Dean turn their heads in unison. Sam, hey, Jess, Jess, hey, Dean. This is my girlfriend, Jessica. Dean looks at her preachingly. Jess, why, your brother, Dean? Jean's, Jess smiles. Sam nods. Dean grins at her and moves closer. Dean, oh, I love the Smurfs, you know. I want to tell you, you're completely out of my brother's league. Jess, just let me put something on. Jess turns to go. Bean's voice stops her. Dean, no, no, I wouldn't dream of it, seriously. Dean goes back over to Sam without taking his eyes off Jess. Sam watches him in expression stony. Dean, anyway, I've got to borrow your boyfriend here. Talk about some private family business. Dean, but, ah, oh, nice meeting you. Sam, no. Sam goes over to Jess and puts her arm around her. So no, whatever you want, got what to say, you can say it in front of her. So Dean, okay. Dean turns to look at them both, both straight on. Dean, Dad hasn't been home for a few days. Sam, so he's working overtime. Molly, Sam, shift. He's still back and soon later. Dean taps his head and looks back up. Dean, Dad's on a hunting trip. He hasn't been home for a few days. Sam's impression hasn't changed while he takes this in. Just glances up at him. Sam, Jess, excuse me, we have to go outside, outside the apartment, and in tea, stairwell, night. Sam and Dean head downstairs. Sam had put on jeans and a hoodie. So I mean, come on, you just can't break in, middle of the night, and expect me to hit the road with you. Dean, you're not hearing me, Sammy. Daddy's missing. Dad's missing. I need you to help me find him. Sam, you remember the post question that's the mist? Or the Devil's Gate in Tifton? He's missing then, too. He's always missing. He is always fine. Dean stops and turns around. Sam stops, too. Dean, not for long. Now you're going to come with me or not? Sam or not? Dean, why not? Sam is swallow. He's not done hunting for good. Dean, come on. Isn't that e- it, was, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't that bad. Dean starts downstairs again. Sam follows. Sam, yeah. When I told Dad I was scared of the thing in my closet, Gave me a fight, point three five. Dean stops the door on the outside. Dean, well, what was he supposed to do? Sam was a nine-year-old kid. He was supposed to say, don't be afraid of dark. Dean, don't be afraid of the dark. Are you kidding me? Of course you should be afraid of the dark. You know what's out there. Sam, yeah, I know, but still. The way we grew up after mum was killed, and dad decided to find the thing that killed her. Dean glances outside. Sam, 
but we haven't found the damn thing. So we can kill everything we can, can find. Dean, we have a lot of people doing it. We had saved a lot of people doing it. Balls. Sam, you think Mum would have wanted this for us? Dean rolls his eyes and slams the door open. It's next exit in the parking lot. Night. There's a light, short flight of stairs from the door to the parking lot. Dean and Smith climb it. Sam, the vain, walking from walking training, and melting the snow of earth into bullets, man. Dean, we have raged like warriors across the parking lot into Pelia for the prologue. Dean, so what are you going to do? You're just going to live your some normal life, apple pie life? It isn't, it isn't, is it, that, is it that? Say so, no, not normal, safe. Dean, and that's why you run away. Dean looks away. Sam, I was just going to college. If Dad had said I was, uh, if I was going to go, I should stay and, I should stay gone. That's what I'm doing. Dean, yeah, well, Dad is real trouble right now. If it, uh, he's not dead already. I can feel it. Sam is on. Dean, I can't do this alone. Sam, yes, you can. Dean looks down. Dean, yeah, well, I want, don't want to. Sam sighs, looks down, thinking, then up. Sam, what do you, what, what was he hunting? Dean up into the truck of the bailier. Spare at a tire compartment. It's an arsenal. It uh, props the compartment door open. Shotgun and digs through the clutter. Dean, all right, let's see what the hell he put, he, uh, what, where the, the hell did you, I put that thing? Sam, so when they left, where did he go with him? Dean, I was working on my own gig. His voodoo thing down in New Orleans. Sam, Dad let you go on a hunting trip by yourself? Sam, look, Dean looks like uh, over at Sam. Dean, I'm 26, dude. Sam pulls some papers out of a folder. Dean, you're right. Here we go. So Dad was checking out. He's at two lane back top just outside Jericho, California. Just about a month after this guy. Dean hands out one of the papers to Sam. Dean, they found his paper car, but he vanished completely MIA. MIA. The papers are printed of an article from Jeff Rocco Herald, headline end. Central Highway Disappearance, set dated September 19th, 2005. This is a man's picture, it's captured by Andrew Casey Missing. Sam reads it and glances up. Sam, so maybe he was kidnapped. Dean, yeah. Well, there's an one, another one in April. Don't sit down. Another Jericho Herald article for each date he mentions. Dean, another one in December. Oh, four, three, ninety-eight, ninety-two, ninety-nine, ten, and all over the past twenty years. Gene puts the article back, takes the article back from Sam, picks the rest of the stack, putting them back in the folder. Dean, all men, all the same five, all the same five miles stretch of road. Dean pulls a bag out of another part, pulls a, a bag out of another part of the arsenal. Dean, I studied happening more and more. So Dad went to go dig around. That was around three weeks ago. I had heard from him since. This is bad, that, that, which is bad enough. Dean grabs a hands, held out tape recorder. Dean, this is, then I got this, Voicemail yesterday. He presses play, recording statically, and the signal was clearly breaking up. John Dean, something bad is happening. Going started happening. I try need to try and figure out what's going on. It may be very careful, Dean. We're all in danger. Dean presses stop. Stop, Sam. You know that where there's V E V P on that. Dean, not bad, Sammy. Kind of like riding a bike, isn't it? Sam shakes his head. Sam, all right. Dean, all right. I slowed the message down. Ran through a gold, through a gold wave. Took out the hiss. And this is what I got. Press play again. Woman, I never go home. Dean, press his stop. Sam, never go home. Dean drops a recorder, puts down the shotgun. Down straight and shuts the trunk and leans on it. Dean, you know, it's almost two years. I never bothered you. Never asked you a thing for a thing.
Sam looks away and sighs and looks back. Sam, all right, I'll go. I'll help you find him. Dean nods, Sam, but I have to get back first thing Monday. Just wait here. Sam nods, tries to go back to the apartment. He turns back when Dean speaks. Dean, what's first thing Monday? Sam, well, I have this. I have an interview. Dean, what? A job interview? Skip it, Sam. It's a law school interview. Is my whole future on a plate. Dean, law school? Dean smirks. Sam, do you got a deal? We got a deal or not? Sam says nothing. Apartment. Inter- internal bedroom. Night. Sam is packing a duffel bag. He puts out a large hook-shaped knife and slides it inside. Jess comes into the room. Jess, wait. Why well, you're taking it off? Sam looks up. Sam, it's about your dad. This is, 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 is this about your dad? Is he all right? Sam, yeah. You know, just a little family drama. Sam goes over to the dresser and turns on a lamp atop of it. Jess, your brother said he was on the same kind, he was on some kind of hunting trip. Jess sits on the bed. Sam rummages in one of the drawers and comes out with a couple of shirts which go in a duffel. Sam, oh yeah, it's just deer hunting. Up in the cabin, he's probably got Jim Black and Joss along for, with him. I try and we're going to bring him back. Jess, what about the interview? To Sam, I'll make the interview. It's only a couple for a couple of days. Sam goes around the bed. Jess goes up and follows. Jess, Sam, I mean, please. Sam stops and turns. Jess, just stop for a second. You sure you're okay? Sam nods a little. Sam, I'm fine. Jess, it's just you don't even well, you don't even talk about your family. Now you're talking off in the middle of the night to spend the weekend with them, and with Monday coming up, which is kind of a huge deal. So, hey, everything's going to be okay. I'll be back in time, I promise. He kisses her on the cheek and leaves. Jess says, at last, tell me, where are, we, where are you going? Central Highway. Exit Central Highway, night. Jess, Jericho, California. The eagle with death metal speaking in tongue plays. A young man, Troy, is driving down the highway, talking on his cell phone. Troy, Amy, I can't... Come over tonight because I've got to work in the morning. That's why. Yeah, okay. I miss it. And my dad's going to have, have my ass. I pitch wine. Troy looks over and sees a woman in a white dress on the side of the road. She's moving as though dancing. She flickers. For a moment, she's gone. Troy, hey, hey. Amy, let me call you back. Miss it. I've got this feeling and it's deep down in me and my bow tray. It gives me, it was, gets me, gives me a wiggle. It makes me my rump shake. I say, ho. Troy tries several times to turn off the radio, which is flickering. Nothing happens. Maybe if I could, if I should touch you, might be electrified. If I say ho, oh, do you mean body? Troy pulls up the neck next to the woman. The dress is torn in several pieces and stops. In of course, the trunk gun seat. Troy, car trouble or something? A long pause. Woman, take me home. Voice is the same one from the auto voicemail. Troy opens the trash in the door. Troy, sure, get in. The woman whose bare foot climbs in and closes the door. Troy, so where do you live? Woman, at the end of Bread Ridge Road. Troy nods. Troy, you're coming from Hol- Are you coming from Hollowell in Piercy or something? The woman's dress is very low cut. Troy notices, stares and looks away, at, laughing nervously. Troy, you know, a girl like you really shouldn't be alone out here. She looks at him mournfully, seductively, and pulls her skirt up over her thigh. Woman, I'm with you. Troy looks away. The woman takes Troy's chin and turns his face towards her. Woman, do you think I'm pretty? Totally nods. Eyes stuck on her cleavage. Troy, uh huh. Woman, you, will you come home with me? Troy, uh, oh yeah. He drives off. Exit. Abandon the house. Next. Night. Yeah, they pull up on an old abandoned house at the end of the road. A woman stares at it sadly. Troy, come on, you don't live here. Woman, I never go home. Troy, what are you talking about? Nobody lives here. Where do you live? He turns and she's gone. He checks his back seat. It's also empty. He gets out of the car, nervous. Troy, that's good. Joke over, okay? You want me to leave? Troy looks around. No signs of life except crickets. He walks towards the house. Troy, hello, hello. There's a picture of a woman and two children inside the house. Picture's covered in dust. Troy peers for the hole in the screen door. A bird flies at, at his face, scaring. 
him into falling over. He leals, leaps into his feet, runs back to the car. He gets out, in, and drives off. It's State Central Highway, night. Troy looks behind him. No one's there, in, then in the rear mirror mirror. The woman is in the back seat. Troy goes again and drives straight through a bridge closed sign, stopping about halfway across the bridge. He screams, blood splutters to the windows. Act 2, gas station, exit, EXT, gas station, day, it is no one November 2005, in is parked in front of a pump. Ramping man by Elman Brothers plays, music lord, I was born a rambling man. Dean comes out of the convenience mart, carrying junk food, music, trying to make a living and doing the best I can. Sam is sitting on the shotgun seat with the door open, arriving for a box of tapes. Dean, hey, to Sam, leaps out and looks at him. Dean, you want breakfast? Sam, no thanks. Moves it, then it's time for leaving. Sam, how do you play the, for the stuff? Music, I hope you understand. Sam, you and Dad are still running credit card scams? Music, as I was born a rambling man. Dean, well, yeah, well, hunting is exactly a pro ball career. Dean p- puts the nozzle back on the cover up. Dean, besides, we all do all we do is apply. We do not f- fault. Not our fault they send us the cards, Sam, yeah. Uh, what names do you write off on the back of the application this time? Sam swings his head leg over back inside the car and break, closes the door. Dean uh Bert Offerman. Dean gets in the car seat and puts his sofa and chips down. Dean his son his son Hector got two cars out of the deal. It's Dean, closes the door. Sam, that sounds about right. I swear, man, you're going to update your cassette tape collection. At least a dozen of cassettes in the box on Sam's tape lap. Some were Al Bernard, others were laid hand labeled Wait, Dean, why? Sam, well, one, they're cassette tapes, and two, Sam holds up a tape for every band he names. Sam, Black Sabbath, Mohead, Metallica. Dean takes a box labeled Metallica for Sam. Sam, it's the greatest hits of Mullet Rock. Dean, well, how's all Sammy? Dean pops the tape in the player. Dean, driver picks a music, shotgun shuts his cake hole. Dean drops a metallic box back in the box and tapes, starts the engines. Sam, you know Sammy, is a chubby 12-year-old, 12-year-old. ADCC black and black begins to play. Sam, is Sam okay? Dean, sorry, I can't hear you, the music's too loud. Dan Dean 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 drives off Central Highway. Exit Central Highway Day. Music back in black. I hit the sack. I've been too long. I'm glad to be back. Yes, I'll get loose. I drive past the sign that says Jericho Seven. Music from the news that's that keep me hanging about. Sam is talking on his cell phone. Sam, thank you. Sam closes his phone. Music looking in at the sky because we're getting me. It's getting me high. Sam, all right, so there's no one catch, matching Stad at the hospital or morgue. Music, forget the hearse, because I'll never die. Sam, so that's something, I guess. Dean glances at Sam, then back at the road. At a bridge ahead of them, there are two police cars and several police, several officers. Music, I got nine lives, cat eyes, amusing every one of them and running wild. Dean, check it out. Le- Sam leans forward for a look at the lock. Music, because I'm back. Yes, I'm back. Dean pulls over. They look, take a long look before Teen turns off the engine. Kid loves music. My cheating way. He begins to play. Dean opens the glove compartment. Pulls out a box of ID cards. If his and John's faces visible ones include FBI and DEA. Picks one out and grins at Sam who stares. Dean, let's go. Dean gets out of the car. On the bridge, they lead Drefty. Drefty, Drefty leans over the railing to yell down that two men in wetsuits are poking around the river. Jeffrey, you guys find anything? Man, no, nothing. Jeffrey turns back to the car in the middle of the bridge. It's familiar. It's Troy's. The blood's gone. The other deputy, Deputy Helene, is at the driver's seat looking around inside the car. Hey, no sign of struggle, no footprints, no footprints, but not this. it's almost too clean. Dean and Sam walk into the crime scene like they belong there. Jeffy, so this, so this kid, Troy, he's dating your daughter, isn't he? Hey, yeah. Jeffy, how, how's Amy doing? I ain't she's putting up missing posters downtown. Dean, you fellas, another one? Like, 
had another one like this last month, didn't you? Jeff looks up. Jeff A looks up. And Dean starts talking and straightens up to talk to him. Jeff A, and who are you? Dean flashes the badge. Dean, Federal Marshals. Jeffy, you two are a little young for Marshals, aren't you? Dean laughs. Dean, thanks. That's awfully kind of you. Dean goes over to the car. Dean, you have had another one just like this, correct? Jeffy, yeah, that's right. Well, what about a mile up the road? There have been others before that. Sam, so this victim, you knew him? Jeffy nods. Jeffy, town like this, everyone knows everyone. Buddy. Dean circles the car, looking around. Dean, any connection between the victims besides they all men? Jeffy, no, not far as we can tell. Sam, so what's the theory? Sam goes over to Dean. Dear Jeffy, honestly, we don't have, don't know. Serial murder, kidnap ring. Dean, well, that's, that's exactly the kind of crack police work we expect out of you guys. Sam starts at Dean's foot. Sam, thank you for your good time. Uh, time. Sam starts to walk away. Dean fellows. Dean, Sam, Sam gentlemen. Jeffy watches them go. Dean smacks Sam on the head. Sam, oh, what is that for? Dean, why do you have to step on my foot? Sam, why do you have to talk to the police like that? Dean looks at Sam and moves in front of him. Forcing Sam to stop walking. Dean, come on. You don't really know what's going on. We're all alone on this. I mean, well, if I'm going to find Dad, we've got to get to the bottom of this thing ourselves. Sam pierces his throat and looks over Sean so sh- Dean's shoulder. Turns, it's Sheriff Pierce and two BFA agents. Sheriff, can I help you boys? Dean, no, sir. We're just leaving. As the FBI agents walk past Dean, he nods at each of them. Dean, Agent Muller, Agent Scully, Dean and, S- Dean and Sam, Pied past the sheriff, returns to watch him go. Jericho, exit street day, the Marquis of High Island, movie theatre, reads, Mercy Town Hall meeting, September 8th, Sunday 8 a.m. p.m. Be safe out there. The young one is tracking up p- posters with Troy's face. Caption, missing Troy Square. Dean and Sam approach. Dean, I bet you that's her. Sam, yeah. Dean and Sam walk up to the young woman. Dean, you must be Amy. Amy, yeah. Dean, yeah, Troy told us about that, you. He, he, we, his uncles, I'm Dean, this is Sammy. Amy, you never mentioned you to me. Then Amy walks away, Sam and Dean, Sam walk with her. Dean, well, that's Troy, I guess. We're not around much. We're up in, we're up in Marister Road. Sam, so we're looking for him too. We're kind of asking around. Another young woman, Rachel, comes up to Amy, puts a hand on her arm. Rachel, hey, are you okay? Yeah, Amy, yeah, Sam, you mind if we ask you a couple of questions? Another poster that says, Missing Troy Square, Flats in the Breeze, inter- Internal, Day in a Day. The four of them are sitting in a booth. Dean and Sam opposite Amy and Rachel. Amy, I was on the phone with Ray Troy. You're driving home. He said he would call me back, right back, and he never did. Amy shakes his hand, head. Amy, no, f- nothing I can remember, Sam. Like a necklace, Amy holds a pen she's wearing. Pendagram is circle, looks down at it. It's Amy, Troy gave it to me, mostly to scare my parents. Troy, Amy laughs, Amy. With all their devil ships, Sam laughs a little and looks down. Then up, Dean looks over. Sam, actually, it means just the opposite. A pentagram is protection against evil. Really powerful, I mean, if you believe in that kind of thing. Dean, okay, thank you. And so most trees. Dean takes off his takes his arm off the back of Dean's seat, leans forward. Dean, here's the here's the deal, ladies. The way Jerry disappeared, something's not right. So if you hear anything, heard anything, Amy and Rachel look at each other. Dean, what is it? Rachel, well, it's just I mean, with all the guys going missing, people talk. Dean and Sam speak in chorus. Dean and Sam, what do you that they talk about? Rachel is a kind of this local legend. This one girl, she got murdered out of Central like decades ago. Dane looks at Sam, who watches Rachel intently, nodding. Rachel, well, supposing she's still out there. Sam nods. Rachel, she hitchhikes, however, she picks up. Well, they disappear forever. Sam and Dean look at each other. Library, initial library day. A web browser is opened at the archive search page for Jericho Herald. Worst female murder hitchhiking. A types in search box. Dean goes click. The scene goes, tells him. There, there they are. Result, Dean response, places. Hitchhiking with Century Highway. The scene per response. Sam is 
sitting next to him watching. Sam, let me try. Dean, what's Max Dean's hand? Dean, I got it. Sam shows Dean's chair out the, shoves Dean's chair out of the way and takes it over. Dean, Jude, damn sits, Dean sits, sits down in the shoulder. Dean, you've got, you're such a cold freak. Control freak. Sam, so angry spirits of bullnet and vonnet death, huh? Dean, yeah. Sam, well, maybe he's not a murder. Sam replaces word around with suicide, finds an article written suicide. A central dean and glances at Sam. Sam opens the article dated April 25th, 1981. A local gentleman's drowning death is ruled as not a suicide. The county sheriff's department said earlier today, Constance Welch, 24446 Brick Ridge Road, leapt off Sylvanian Bridge at a mile 33 the Central Highway in subsequently drowned last night. Deputy J. Pierce told reporters that hours before her death, Miss Welsh logged a call with 991 emergency centres. In a panic tone, Miss Welsh described how she found two young children, five or six, in a bathtub, of leaving her alone for several minutes. He reported that they had a complex. But what happened to children was a terrible accident. It must have been too much for my wife. Our babies were gone and Conference just couldn't bear it. Husband Joe Walsh, but I ask you all, please respect my privacy during the, the trying time. At the time of the children's death, Mrs. Welsh suffered suicide. Mr. Welsh was at the Frontiers Auto Service Yard, where he works a graveyard shift as associate manager. The colony might have been quiet. She was was the sweetest, most caring girl I ever knew, said Do- Deanna Cooper, a neighbour. But she doted on those children. Sam, this was 1981, Constance Welsh, 24 years old, jumps off Savannah Bridge, jump down the river. This is pitch concerts. It's a woman who killed Troy. Dean, does it say why she did it? Dean, yeah. Dean, what? Sam, an hour before that, if they found her, she called 911 and apparently two little kids are you know, in the bathroom. She leaves them alone for a minute and when she comes back, they can't breathing. She's both die. Dean raises his eyebrows. Do you hear her? I'll call the picture of Joseph next. The picture of Savannah Bridge is placed to a died. Sam, our babies are gone. The concert just couldn't bear it, said husband Jonah Welsh. Dean, the bridges look familiar to you, Savannah Bridge. Savannah Bridge night. Dean and Sam walk along the bridge. They stop to lean on the rain and look down at the river. Dean, so this is where the concerts took the swan dive. Sam, so you think the day could have been here? Sam looks over at Dean. Dean, well, he's chasing the same story. We're chasing him. Dean continues walking. Sam follows. Sam, okay, so now what? Dean, now we keep digging till we find him. Might take a while. Sam stops. Dean, Sam, just Dean, I told you. I want to go back by Monday. Dean turns around. Dean, Monday right? The interview. Sam, right. Sam, yeah. Dean, yeah. I forgot. You're really serious about this, aren't you? You think you're just going to become some lawyer, marry your girl? Sam, maybe, why not? Dean, does Jessica know the truth about you? I mean, does she know about the things you've done? Sam steps closer. Sam, no. And she's not going to know. Dean, well, that's healthy. You tell all you want, Sammy, but sooner or later you're going to have to face up who you really are. Sam turns around and keeps walking. Sam follows. Sam, well, that, who's that? Dean, you're one of us. Dan is saying, hurries to get in front of Dean. Sam, I'm not one of you. This is not going to be your life, Dean. We have a responsibility to. So I'm the dad and his crusade well, for pictures. I wouldn't have even know what mum looked like. What difference would it make? Even if you could find that thing that killed her. Mum's gone and she ain't coming back. Dean grabs Sam by the collar and shoves him against the railing of the bridge. Long pulls. Dean, don't talk about like her uh, like that. Dean releases Sam and he walks away. He sees Constance standing at the edge of the bridge. Dean, Sam, Sam comes to next to Stanton next to Dean. Constance looks over at them, then steps forward off the bridge. Hey, see him and D- Dean run to the railing and look over. Dean, where did she go? Sam, I don't know. Behind them, he pales his engine that starts. I mean, the highlights, headlights, come on, Dean. And Sam, look, at, turn and look. Dean, what's the... Sam, who's driving your car? Dean pulls the keys out of his pocket, jingles him. Sam glances at him, the car jerks in motion. Heading straight for them, they turn up and run. D- Sam, Dean, go, go, go. The car is moving faster than they are. 
As it gets too close, Sam and Dean drive into the railing. The car goes to a halt. At three, Savannah Bridge. As exit Savannah Bridge night, establishing shot of the bridge. Sam has caught himself on the edge of the bridge and is hanging on. He pulls himself up onto the bridge and looks around. Sam, Dean, Dean, bit of all blow, filthy, annoyed Dean, calls out of the water into the mud, panting. Dean, what? Sam, hey, are you right? Dean holds on one hand and okay, Sam. Dean, I'm super. Sam laughs, relieved, and scoots away from the edge. X E X T Savannah Bridge, mate, later, Sam, shuts the hood of his car, leads on it, Sam, your car is all right, Dean, yeah, whatever she did to it, did to it, seems all right now, that concert chick, what a bitch, Sam, well, she don't want us digging around, that's for sure, so where did you go, go from here, genius, Sam says on the hunt for the next to Dean, Dean throws up arms in frustration, a flick mud off his hands, Sam sniffs, and looks at Dean, Sam, you smell like a toilet. Medine locks down motel, initial lo- mo- lobby, motel lobby day. It's the 2nd of November, 2005. Aversa Bank Mastercard in the name of Hector Everman lands on a re- high written guest ledger. Dean, get one room, please. Dean is standing at the motel check-in desk, still filthy. Sam, right behind him. The clerk picks up the card and looks at it. Clark, you guys have a reunion or something? Sam, what do you mean? Clark, I don't have a guy, Bert Ephraim. He came out of a room for a whole, brought out a room for a whole month. Dean looks back at Sam. John's room. Eternal hotel room. Day. Hotel room swings open. Sam is on the other side. Having just picked the lock, Sam hides the picks and stands by. Dean is just outside, playing lookout, until Sam reaches out of the room to grab his shoulder and yank him inside. Sam closes the door behind him and look around every vertical surface. The papers pinned on it, mats, newspaper clippings, pictures, notes, the books on the desk, assorted junk on the floor, bed, including something with a haddish material symbol. Sam, whoa, Dean turns on the light. By the light, bed and picks up a half-eaten hamburger sitting there. Sam sets up a line of salt on the floor. Dean sniffs the burger and recoils. Dean, I don't think he'd been here f- for a couple of days at least. Sam fingers the salt on the floor and looks up. Sam salts catsized the cells. He's worried, trying to keep something from coming in. Dean looks at the papers covering one wall. Sam, what have you got there? Dean, Trenival, Trenival, Highway victim, Sam nods. The victims seen on the wall include Mark, somebody, William Durrell, Scott Niff for roll, who disappeared in 1987 age 25, and somebody in parts. Mark Durrell, Niff for all white males, judging by the photos. Dean, I don't get it. I mean, different men, different jobs. Dean crosses the road. Dean ages, efficacies. There's always a connection, right? What do these guys have in common? While Dean talks, Sam take, looks at the picture, takes the papers, but take the wall. There's something about the bell witch. Two people being burned alive, a skeletal person, bearing a torn and several scared people with a note, mortuous dents and a column about devils, din demons, about sirens, witches that possess a wooden on pentacle, a note that says with women and white above, a print of Jeffro. Jericho, headlight, herald, article, and concert suicide. J.M. turns on another lamp. Sam, Dad figured it out. Sam looks, turns to look. Dean, what do you mean? Sam, you found the same article we, we did. Conscious well, she's a woman in white. Dean looks at the photos of conscious victims. Dean, sly, you sly dog, you sly dog. Dean looks, turns back to Sam. Dean, all right, so we're dealing with a woman in white. Dad would have found the corpse. I destroyed it, Sam. She might have another, have another weakness, Dean. Well, Dad would have want, want to make sure. Dean crosses to Sam. Dean, would to dig her up. Does it say where she's buried, Sam? No, no, not. I can tell. If I were dead, though, I'd go ask her husband. Sam takes a picture of Joseph Welch. Takes a picture of Joseph Welch. Catherine says he's 30. The article dates in 1981. You must be 64. Sam, if he's still alive. Sam goes to look at something else. Dean looks at a picture below the Herald. Article, a woman in white dress. Dean, all right. Why don't you 
uh, see if you can find the dress. I'll get cleaned up. Then he starts to walk away down and sees Dan. Sam turns. Sam, hey, Dean. Dean stops and turns back. Sam, what did they, what they said about earlier about Mum and Dad? I'm sorry. That holds up a hand. Dean, no chick click moments. Sam laughs and nods. Sam, all right, jerk. Dean, bitch. Sam laughs again. Sam, Dean disappears, presumably in the bathroom. Sam notices something. His smile disappearing, crosses over a close, a close look. A rosary hangs in front of a large mirror. A stuck to the mirror frame is a photo of John sitting on the hood of the pillow next to a boy in baseball cap. Presumably Dean, when the younger boy, presumably Sam and John's lap. Sam takes the photo off the mirror and holds it, bold, holds it, sad, smiling sadly. Motel, inside, internal, motel room, day later. Sam paces holding his phone and sits down on the bed as my smell matches his playing. Jess, hey, it's me. It's about 10.20 Saturday night. Dean, clean again, comes out of the bathroom, grabs his jacket, he snugs on one shoulder, he's crossing the room. Dean, hey man, I'm starving. I'm going to grab a little something to eat in that diner down the street. You want anything? Sam, no. Dean, after a buying, Sam shakes his head. Sam, huh, huh? A-A-X-T, the parking lot day. Dean leaves the hotel room. He gets the, the, the jacket, gets the jacket the rest the way on as he crosses the lot. He looks over and sees a police car where the motel clerk is talking to Deputy Jeffy and Dean, Deputy Hain, who turns, clerk turns to uh, Dean, who turns away and pulls at the cell phone. He turns to the hotel room. Day, parking lot. Day, alternatively. Sam is sitting on the bed, still listening to the message. Just go home soon. Okay, I love you. Phone beeps. Sam looks at it and passes a button and puts it, puts it back on his ear. Sam, what? Outside the deputies are approaching Dean. Dean, Jude, five o. Shake, take off. Sam stands up. Sam, what about, about you, Dean? Oh, you're gonna. They're gonna spot me. He kind of spotted me. Go find Dad. Dean hangs out the phone as the deputies approach. He turns and grins at them. Dean. Primary officers, Jeffy, where's your partner? Dean, a partner? What What partner? Jeffy glances over his shoulder, jerks his son towards the motel room. Hain heads over there. Dean fidgets. Sam sees Hain approaching and darts away from the window. Jeffy, so, fake uh, US Marshal, fake credit cards. You got anything that's real? Dean, my bruise. Dean grins. Sam, Hain, Sam, Sam. Uh, Dean, over the hood of the car, car. Jeffy, you have the right to remain silent. Act 4. Sheriff's Office, Sheriff's Office Day. Jack P. says in the room, carrying a box. He sets the box on the table in which Dean sits and goes around the table, facing Dean across it. Sheriff, do you want to give us your real name? Dean, I told you, it's Nugget, Ted Nugget. Sheriff, I'm not sure you realise how much trouble you're in here. Dean, we're talking like Miss Anova. Kind of trouble, oh, squeal like a big trouble. Sheriff, you've got, a face, got the faces of a tin... Missing persons take to your wall. Dean looks away. Dean, along with a whole lot of satanic mumbo jumbo. Boy, you officially a suspect. Dean, that makes sense because when the first one went missing in 82, I was free. So I know you've got partners. One of them, an older guy. Maybe they started the whole thing. So tell me, Dean. But this, the, toss, the chef tosses a brown jacket over a brown leather Covered journal on the table. Sheriff, is th- this is? Dean stares at the sheriff. Sits on the edge of the table. He flits through the journal. Field newspaper clippings, notes and pictures. Just like what that was on the wall in John's motel room. Sheriff, I thought that might be your name. See, I left this, leaf through this. What little way you can make out. I mean, it's nine. Set me kind of crazy. Dean leans forward to the close, the close lot. Sheriff, I found this too. He opens his journal. A page that reads Dean 35 111. Circled nothing else but on that page. Sheriff, now, you're saying right where you are, telling me exactly what the hell that means. Dean stares down at the papers at a page and looks up. Welsh House. Eternal House Day. Sam, seen for the chain like link covering with grim, a grimy glass window. Knocks on the door, the window in it as it in. Old man opens that, a recognisable Joseph Welsh. So, hi, are you Joseph Welsh? 
Joseph, yeah, exit. It's eternal. Joy, external. Driveway, day. Sam and Joseph are walking down the dr drunk field driveway. Joseph holding the photo of Sam behind on John's motel row window, room window. Joseph, yeah, he's older than that, that's older, but that's him. Joseph hands the photo back to Sam. Joseph, he went by three or four days ago. Said he was a porter. Sam, that's right. He's working for a sto on a story together. Joseph, well, I don't know what the hell kind of story you you're working on. The questions you asked me. Sam, about your wife concerts? Joseph, he asked me where, where is she is buried, Sam. And where is that again? Joseph, what am I going to go through this twice? Sam, it's fact checking, if you don't mind. Joseph, there's a plot behind my old place over at Brackenbridge. Sam, and where did you, when, and why did you move? Joseph got a kind of, got, not gonna live in a house by my children died. Sam walks, stops walking. Sam stops too. Sam, Mr. Welch, did you marry again? Joseph, no way. In concert, she was my love of my life. Peace woman ever knew. Sam, so you had a happy marriage? Joseph hesitates. Joseph def def definitively. Sam, well, that should do it. Thanks for the, the, your time. Sam turns around towards the failure. Sam walks away. Sam waits a moment then, but looks back at Joseph. Sam, Miss Welsh, did you ever hear a woman, a, a woman in white? Joseph turned around. Joseph, what? Joseph, Sam, a woman in white, or something, or sometimes we'd be a woman. Joseph looks, just looks, Sam, it's a ghost story. Well, it's more of a phenomenon, really. Sam walk, starts walking around. Joseph, towards service. Sam, uh, they're, they're spirits. They're sighted for hundreds of years. Dozens of places in Hawaii, Mexico, lately, Arizona, Indiana. All those are, they are, all these are definitely different women. Sam stops in front of Joseph. You understand? You all, but they all share the same story. Joseph, boy, I don't care for nonsense, such much for nonsense. Joseph walks away. Sam follows. Sam, see? When they're all alive, their husbands were unfaithful to them. Joseph stops. Sam, and, who's, and these women, basically suffering for temporary insanity, murdered the children. Sam turns around. Joseph turns around. Sam, then once they realise what they've done, they took their own lives, and now they get spirits of curse, wearing in back rows, woodways. They find and think, why they kill him? And the man, man is no ever seen again. Joseph, you think, you think you're something to do with, that, that has something to do with concerts, you are asked. So you tell me, Joseph, I mean, maybe, maybe I made some mistakes, but no matter what I did, Joseph, concerts, you never would have killed her own children. Now you get the hell out of here and you don't come back, Joseph's face, face shakes. Whether for anger or grief, it's impossible to tell. A long moment, he turns away, Sam sighs. Sheriff's office, internal, sheriff's office, night. Dean, I don't know how many times I'm going to tell you. It's my, He's, it's my high school lock and nut combo. Sheriff Pierce is still in the Dean over Dean 35111 page. Sheriff, we're going to do this all night long? Deputy's in the room. Deputy, we've got a 911 shots heard at Wentford, Wentford Road. Sheriff, you go, you have to go to the bathroom? Dean, no. Sheriff, good. Shane, Sheriff handcuffs Dean to the table and leaves. Dean sees the paper like, poking up the journal, pulls it out and looks at it. Many moments later, the sheriff and deputy are gearing up to leave. He's out of the cuffs. Dean watches through the window. The door ducks out of sight, and the deputy approaches the door and waits. It's Turnal, sheriff's office, night. Dean climbs down the fire escape, carrying John's journal. Highway, it's Turnal, highway, night. Exit, street, night, and alternately. Sam is driving in Paleo when his car phone rings. He pulls it out and answers it. Dean is on the phone booth. Apparently his phone is confiscated. He doesn't, doesn't have time to steal it back. Dean, fake. Why are you on one phone call, Sammy? I don't know. Pretty legal, Sam. You're welcome. Sam grins. Dean, listen, we've got to talk, Sam. Tell me about it. So the husband, was it, it was unfaithful. We are dealing with a woman in white. You buried be behind old, uh, old house. They should have been Dean, dad's next stop. Dean, Sammy, you have to shut. Up for a second, Sam. I can't figure out why Dad doesn't destroy the corpse yet. Sam, Dean, well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. She's gone. Dad left Jericho. Sam, what? How do you know? Dean, I've got his journal. Dad, Sam, he wouldn't go anywhere without that thing.
Going away with that thing? With that, that thing? Dean, sure. Well, he did this time. Sam, what did he say? Dean, all the same, all the same. Ex-Marine crap. He wants to get us to know where he's going. Sam, Connors, where to? Dean, I'm not sure yet. Sam, I don't understand. I mean, what could he be so important that Dad would just skip in the middle of a job, Dean? What the hell's going on? Sam looks up and slams the brake, dropping the phone. Constance appeared on the road in front of him. Car goes right through her. Sam brings it to a halt. Dean, Sam, Sam, inside the car. Sam breathes hard. Constance is sitting in the back seat. Constance takes me, take me home.